Rebuilding a Stuart Score engine. Part 1. It is time to concentrate on the individual engine rebuilds. These are the components of the twin cylinder score engine. The job starts by thoroughly cleaning all of the parts, after which assembly can begin in the next episode. The main series, Rebuilding 3 Stuart Steam Plants, is still going to be active when I actually assemble the steam plants, not the individual parts. In this episode, I'm concentrating on the parts for the score engine. I've shown my whetstone in quite a few episodes, but really this is much quicker. It's a piece of 600 grade wet or dry sandpaper and it's on the bench. And is the bench flat? Well, yes, it's a commercial worktop, so it's flat enough. First, I clean the steam chests. The one that I repaired is looking good and that should be fine. In this clip, I'm cleaning one of the gland nuts that fits in the steam chest. Most of this is self-explanatory, I don't need to really speak, but I will anyway. This is cleaning the pistons. And this is a piece of mahogany that I use for various jobs, including resting parts on when I'm painting. Hence the colour of it. What I'm doing is wrapping a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper around this block, then I can clean the inside edges of the crossheads. It's fairly self-explanatory and quite simple to do. I just rub the crosshead up and down the piece of wood covered in sandpaper and suddenly it becomes very clean. In this clip I'm cleaning the end of the crosshead. It's important to me to make sure all of these parts are clean. Unlike the other two engines which are quite old, this score engine is not, so I need to make sure it's nice and clean, which is the whole purpose of cleaning up the parts in this episode. Here I'm cleaning the valve forks on the end of the valve rods. These rotary abrasive discs are perfect for this job, although they do make a mess, because as you use them, particles break off all the time, and it gets quite messy around the area you're working. And by the way, it's really important to wear eye protection when using these. This is one of the eccentric sheaves fitted to one of the eccentric rods. And just like the main casting, these parts have not been fettled and they're actually quite rough. I cannot live with this. They need to be cleaned up so they look as good as the rest of the parts. I've decided to use the original pistons because they're a good fit in the cylinder and if it's not broken, don't fix it. Because of the two holes I drilled in the end of the piston to extract it using a pair of circlip pliers, it's a really simple job to take the cylinder cover off, remove the piston, turn a groove in it and fit an o-ring. Here I'm doing a little bit more than just cleaning the valve drive blocks. These are a little bit big and are quite a tight fit in the valve. And this is no good, it's really important that slide valves do not stick to the drive blocks. They need to be free to move and are held against the port face by steam pressure only. It's time to dig out what looks like graphited yarn, old and dry and crumbly graphited yarn. In fact, it looks like it's just been pushed in there, not wound around the spindle. These days, I use Teflon coated yarn and in a future episode, I will show the fitting of Teflon coated yarn to both the valve spindles and the piston rods. Cleaning up these parts was definitely the longest and most tedious job. Maybe that's why the original builder, who was possibly more into engineering than finish, didn't bother. I started off by cleaning these using wet or dry sandpaper, but it wasn't good enough for the job. Then I thought I would try the tumbler polisher. First of all though, I need to tip the steel balls back into the drum. This was not a good idea really. A polisher is for polishing, not removing great big lumps of metal. And even though I left it going for quite a long while, it didn't do much. And the noise it made drove me mad. I decided to continue with the other parts of the cleanup. Here I'm re-threading the eccentric sheaves 6BA. I'm re-threading the original 5BA hole using a 6BA taper tap, which provided I go all the way through, does the job perfectly. I re-thread one, and then I re-thread the other. And here they are, sat on the bench on top of the wet or dry sandpaper, and as you can see, 
Both of them are now re-threaded 6BA and I proceed to fit some 6BA Allen head groove screws. These will securely hold the eccentric sheaves against the crankshaft. Quite unlike the previous slot headed groove screws which were 5BA and broken. These are the main bearings and originally they were all fitted with oil cups. Unfortunately though, one of the holes in the bearing was drilled oversized and the oil cup fell out. I decided to do away with them all together and using a centre drill I made oil cups down into the bearing material. In this clip I'm cleaning the piston rod gland. I'm using the rotary abrasive tool and I found it easier to leave it in the cylinder cover to hold it. I carefully cleaned the crankshaft's crank webs using the wet to dry sandpaper method. The amount of clean parts is increasing, I still have to do the cylinders though. I remove these parts from the tumbler polisher and I'm cleaning them up using a needle file. Followed by finishing the job on the rotary abrasive wheel. I started the job by using a coarse wheel and then I moved on to the green wheel which is not so coarse and gives a better polish. It's important to me to get this right because the engine needs to look as good as it's going to run. And here, after quite a lot of time and effort, are the finished set of parts ready for assembly. With the exception of the bed plate itself, which is still sat on one of my central heating radiators in order to harden and bake on the paint. That's it for this episode. In the next one, I start to put it all back together. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.